Jair Brown, the rookie, the only player the 49ers have traded up for in not one but two drafts. Jair Brown, he's been awesome. You know, whenever the Hufunga injury took place, that was rough. Um, but Tig stepped in and played really, really well. I, I, I really did. I, th- I thought he played well. He got injured, so that was rough. And uh, it's, it's, it's just kind of, it's been an issue. Now, he missed like four games, but, you know, you had some safeties come in, and shout out to Logan Ryan. He did exactly what we needed. He provided depth, had one of the worst games you could ever have in the playoffs last week. It was terrible. So the question was asked to Kyle Shedhead this week, is there a chance Jair Brown plays this week? Uh, yeah, there's there's a chance. Uh, I thought he ended the week real well, and I expect him to be that much better this week because of it. That is gigantic news because <laughs> we need him out there. I'm just going to be very, very honest. Now, let's jump back a week. This was Shanahan's kind of thing, uh, talking about why he went with Logan Ryan over Jair Brown last week versus the Packers. Jair had missed about four weeks, and you know, I think it was two games, but he had been out four weeks, and he's been awesome in practice. I love Jair. It has nothing to do with him. Just our experience of... Um, you know, playoff games, being around this, it's, I think it's a lot when you got a rookie who hasn't played in, in a month who is a very passionate, aggressive player. I just don't want to put all that on him to have him go out in the playoff game and um, when he hasn't been out there for four weeks, and especially when we have a veteran behind him who could just calm down a little bit. And um, if things would have gone differently, we would have put Jair in right away, but um, I mean, we don't want to do that really to Jair. So now it's not putting him in right away. He's had a week and a half of practice. He's had time. He's got through not one but two game plans. I do fully expect Jair Brown to be out there after the the way in which Logan played. Now, we'll, we'll kind of see how that goes, but I'm excited about that. That is a gigantic upgrade. And, and what we've got to go do and just enjoy this as much as possible, God, 19th NFC Championship appearance for the 49ers. Ah. Go handle business against what I consider a lesser opponent. Um, if, if I had to stack all the AFC and NFC teams, I wouldn't put Detroit in the top six. I wouldn't. But they're part of the NFC, and they've won back-to-back games, which is huge in the playoffs. But, you know, is beating the Rams and then beating the Bucks worthy of, you know, where they're at in the glory or whatever that they're getting? I don't know. They, they they didn't get to pick their opponents. They they play who shows up, and they've won back to back. I'm not too concerned. Not gonna lie. Big Joe says Jair Brown is greater than Logan Ryan. He's got speed for uh veracity. Uh, we saw lady. Yes, speed is an issue. Whenever you watch Logan Ryan play, I didn't think that was too much of an issue though. This game, it's just missed tackles, missed assignments, missed coverages. You name it, he missed it. Um, Mick says Jair Brown better start over Logan Wright. I'm with you. I did a poll on Twitter. The polls on YouTube are always weird. They don't work that much. And I get a bunch of emails saying the poll's not working. So I just stopped doing them. Um, maybe I need to start back up, but it's rough whenever you got to answer, you know, all these emails, which I love, but half of them are just, Hey, the poll's not showing up for me. Uh, but anyway, I did a poll on YouTube. Who should start at the second safety spot, Jair Brown or Logan Ryan? Over 2,800 votes and 95.6% were for Jair Brown. So uh, the fans, yeah, <laughs> they, they are 100% in on Jair Brown. He's got to be the future. I, I, I'm really excited about him, and I can't wait until we've got Tala Nohufunga and Jair Brown as our starting safeties. Uh, Tayshawn Gibson's been awesome, but he almost retired last year. You know, I hope he comes back next year, but who? Man, um, yeah, <laughs> look at this, Rob. He says, you know, Kyle Shanahan interpreted when asked about Brown. Oops. <laughs> yeah, and I, I was saying for a couple weeks that I thought that would be the case. But, uh, man, uh, it, it, we'll, we'll kind of see. Let's keep going through it. Let's talk about the second biggest issue. And I got a lot of questions, and that was Ambry Thomas. Ambry Thomas had a bad game. Ambry Thomas had a terrible game, and I know everybody wants to focus on those two pass interference calls, which were an issue. Look, I'll say this. Ambry's going to continue to start this game in three corner sets whenever we're in our nickel package. Demo slides into the nickel. Ambry goes outside for several reasons. One, Ambry has more good tape this year than bad tape. Okay, that's period. I know that Ambry's not great, but 
Ambry Thomas is better than any corner, any corner that the Detroit Lions have. He would be their starter. He would be their starter. Now, Brian Branch, who's their safety nickel guy, I would put ahead of him, but that's it as far as the corners go. On top of that, Amon Ross St. Brown plays in the slot predominantly. You want to put Isaiah Ta uh, Isaiah Oliver, who I like, in the slot against Amon Ross St. Brown, their best offensive player? Uh-uh-uh. This ain't the week for it, man. I, I mean, Isaiah Oliver is a very good tackler, but he is questionable at best. In coverage, you want to put him against their best player? No. We want Demo in there at that nickel spot. That's what you want, which keeps Ambry outside. And then, too, like, look, Ambry just got to trust himself. He's had his best year by far, and he's always in position. He just got to quit hugging the wide receivers at the catch point. He's turning and looking at the ball, but he's still wrapping up the wide receiver before the ball's getting there, which he can see. He's close to being a good corner. He just got to trust himself. That's all. Oh, right here, Uncle Salty, my man. He says, we are going to do our viewer party um, in downtown Seattle. That's what's up. Over 300 people expected for the event. So the Seattle Faithful chapter is second to none. They are awesome. Alex, the president's great. Uncle Salty's great. Um, Uncle Salty, he's, he's, he's all right. Let's just be honest. No, he's the best. Um, but he's called Un Uncle Salty for a reason. Um, it it's just what it is. So, yeah, if you're anywhere around Seattle, man, whew, go change that. And if you're sharing, if you guys are hosting a party anywhere, there are faithful that want to attend that don't know about your party. Let me know about it. I'm happy to use this platform in any way I can to help the community. That's what started this whole dang thing, and that's never going to change uh, no matter what. So uh, <laughs> that's, this is the poll I should have had up. Russell says, here's your poll. 100% of the people named Rusty will cheer for the 49ers. I love that, man. The 49ers Rush Podcast.